so uh, my name is Josh Sharfstein. I'm co-chair of the Population Health Roundtable. And uh, it's been a very fascinating discussion to listen to today and participate in. I would say that this is interesting for the roundtable because um, I think pretty much for the time that I've been on the roundtable, we have not really talked about population health squarely you know, like this. Um, I think it's been, we've been very focused on exploring and learning different uh, facets of population health around education, um, economics, and a whole bunch of other specific topics. But this was a chance, I think, to kind of like pull back and see what is really like a map of, you know, the population health world and how um, particularly healthcare and public health have, have warmed up to it. It's been a huge transition for um, organizations, I would say, over the last few years. And, you know, it's the transition is still going on. So I would say that my takeaway from this sort of uh, discussion from this, for me, like big picture look at all the things that can be happening is that there's a lot more happening that was happening before. It's happening at different levels. There is a recognition that really wasn't there, I think, the last time I checked in with this. Last time I checked in with this, particularly people were saying that population health could include um, basically labeling all the medical devices in your hospital. That was a population health activity. Um, I, I have a reference for that. So we're now past that. We're even past population health is, you know, checking to see whether somebody's eligible for something. And we're having a conversation about the engagement of healthcare in the broader population health discussion. So I think that is, that's really good. And, and I think that having a map of that, I think of the matrix as kind of a map for people to place themselves on the map and to think about how to be in more than one place on the map. Just because you're at the bottom of the map doesn't mean you can't also be at the top of the map is, is a good thing. And I think the overall message in general for me to healthcare is like get on the map, you know, and do more on the map and see the leaders in your particular field and what else can you do. And, you know, this reflects a lot of work by a lot of people to spread the word. And I know that you know, um, on the healthcare side, the AAMC has done a lot, the AHA has done a lot. There's a lot of conversation about these things that have really turned the map. You know, it's sort of like if you watch the, if we had this, you know, one of those time lapses over the last 20 years, you'd see like things start to, to kind of pop up until, you know, right now it's getting denser. It needs, still needs to be a lot denser. There needs to be more, more on the map. But um, to me, that's the overall message. But there are also three more subtle messages. There was a lot that was discussed, including some very interesting questions. But for me, there these are no particular order, but I'll just raise them. And then we're going to open it up for other reflections that anyone here has. So um, number one, the map is not uncharted territory completely. That there are not only organizations that have worked in these areas before, but there are people who live with those issues. And so there is the um, concern that people show up and they think that, you know, they're discovering a country that already has people living there. So, you know, how do you, not that that's ever happened, you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, how part of being successful is um, recognizing the, the landscape that you're in and being able to respect and work with people who are there and, and do it so that it's a true collaboration. Number two, just jumping onto the map and just having chaos at all levels is kind of inefficient. You know, I, it's better, I think, to have a densely populated map than, than a map with nobody really thinking about these things, no question. But if there is um, not kind of an order to the chaos, it's at the minimum inefficient. And what I mean by that is you get, uh, I've been in roles where I've seen, you know, six different case management programs all serving the same, you know, organization, you know, it's basically the same, shooting for the same goal, often serving the same groups of people, and not a lot of um, collaboration between them. And I actually think the, to me, as a former public health official, a really important role for public health, and if not public health, someone, some organization, is to kind of bring order to the chaos and put a structure in place that when people join, get on the map, it's connected to other things that are happening. And you don't have that problem. You actually have a central triage. You have, if you need triage, but a cent, you know, you, you're not duplicating structures. And I think 
about one of the more successful efforts in Baltimore, which was around early childhood, which has grown. It started with safe sleep. It was like way at the bottom of the map, but it has grown to, um, uh, I think, over 100 organizations, um, many uh, community-based organizations, all the major hospitals, and they're doing a whole range of different activities. Baltimore, despite all kinds of challenges, has seen a continual decline in infant mortality. Um, and a reduction in the uh, disparity in infant mortality rates. And I think it is because, in particularly on that issue, on early childhood outcomes, there's like a structure. People know where they fit in. They're regularly meeting. They've got you know, core strategies and roles for people in those strategies, and it kind of propels itself forward. So I think you know, get on the map, but there are people who are already there you need to listen to and also think about the structure. And then the last thing I would say is that and this is also my bias uh, coming a bit out of public health, is that I think that um, it's really important to distinguish between uh, activities and activities that matter. And to me, the way to distinguish between activities and activities that matter is that you have meaningful outcomes that you're really shooting for and you're accomplishing them. And one of the reasons going back a step to have a structure is that the structure can be really organized around an outcome. And you know, collective impact kind of approaches are one way to do that, where people really have a particular outcome in mind, but just more generally using data. And I was particularly struck by the comment from Oregon that like, getting data is really hard. It's really hard, I think, to be successful and to tell the difference between activities and activities that really matter if you're not able to you know, watch their impact. And, um, that's why I think a very important role for healthcare, actually, is to provide data for these kinds of cross-sectoral initiatives. And um, I work separately with the grant with the De Beaumont Foundation to consult with health departments around getting data from healthcare, what the legal pathways and public health pathways are, to be able to get data to basically inform um, strategies like this. How you, so you, the people where you're on your map, the, on the map, you know, um, you know, you can get information about uh, whether what you're doing is, matters. Because if it doesn't matter, change it. People want to improve, but oftentimes it's very hard to know. And you wind up in a little bit of a eddy of like doing things, and you're, and you're not sure whether they work. So those are my three cautions. Who's there already? Chaos is inefficient. It's better if there's like a, a structure and an effort. And the third is keep your eye on the prize. Um, so thank you for the chance to, give the, to get the ball rolling. Um, Thank you to um, Alina for feeding me some of those excellent points and for all the great work that she has done on um, uh, organizing today and the entire team here at National Academies. Thank you. And I will um, be here to let anybody who wants come up, say a few things, and I'll just hover just in case, you know, um, in. For people visiting Washington, there's a little bit of something in the air that makes people want to monologue for long periods of time. So I'll try to, you, you know, um, rein that in if that were to happen. But usually that does not happen. So please, I welcome you to come up.